Lou, it's uh, Chris Johnston. The early morning trade, I guess, how did this one uh, come together with the San Jose Sharks? Well, like every other uh, trade, Chris, as we spoke the other day, timing is everything, and uh, certainly we were having discussions, uh, and, you know, it came about last night where it got finalized uh, and really totally finalized early this morning. Do you have any immediate plans now to, to call anyone up from the Marlies, or is that still in discussion? I'm sorry, Chris, I didn't hear you. I said, do you have any immediate plans now to call up someone from the Marlies, or is that still in discussion? Yes, we will be calling up uh, this morning uh, Percy and uh, Leipzig. Uh, Lou, it's Adam Kimmelman from NHL.com. Um, you guys have 12 picks now heading into the 2016 draft. Have been Has these couple of trades where you've stockpiled these draft picks has that been just as important as the players that you've gotten in these trades? Well, I, th I think the picks are the most important thing uh, that we've gotten uh, in these transactions. Uh, I think that we'll see what the players bring from now until the end of the year. But the picks were the most important uh, as far as giving us an opportunity, depending upon where we're at, uh, with these two being pushed out two years, they could also be used at a later time to acquire a player if need be, or to select, select in the entry draft. Lou, it's, uh, it's Joe Siegel from CP. Yes, uh, Joe. Lou, I just wanted to know, is there some thought to, to getting out in front of the market and making these trades now as opposed to, you know, in the final hours before the deadline? Well, I, I you know, I've never believed that in other words, you wait till the final minute. If you can make something that you're comfortable with, uh, not worry about what other people are doing or thinking, uh, then you should do it. Sometimes, uh, you know, words, it can't happen until the end uh, because it still takes two people to make a decision to have a transaction. Uh, but I always felt that if you could do it a little earlier, better. But I've been in it at the last minute right up until two minutes before 3 o'clock. So, uh, I've seen both sides of it. Uh, it. You know, it depends upon what the partner situation is. Lou, it's uh, Rob Longley from the Toronto Sun. Um, I'm wondering how much interest uh, there was in Roman Polak, and if you could uh, tell us what his influence he had with the team, in your opinion. Well, first of all, um, Roman, uh, there's, there's no question, you know, what his characteristics are. I mean, he's a man. He, he's a, a, a player's player. Uh, he competes each and every night. Uh, he's somebody that uh, you go in a foxhole with at any given time. Uh, he knows what we think of him. Uh, he certainly understands uh, what we're trying to do here uh, with reference to the plan that's in place. Um, and I, I just can't say enough about him uh, as a person and also what he's brought to that lineup. And was there much interest in him, Luke? Uh, well, I, you know, uh, hopefully there's interest in every player. Right. Lou, in regard to the 12 picks you have coming up for the 2016 draft, do you envision a scenario where you guys use all those picks, or would you be, you know, in the in the mood to maybe move some of them for either? picks farther down the road or current NHL players? I, I don't think that's a question I can answer right now because uh, if that opportunity was there that we thought made us better, uh, we would have already done that. But usually those type of things happen after draft when you see where different players are, 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 are lying as far as whether they're picked or not picked. Uh, so those, those are draft table situations. But to answer your question, I think you do anything that you feel is going to you know, fit within what the plan is, uh, and I, that's an overused word right now, but the, the process that we're trying to create uh, so that, you know, anything can happen. There's nothing in cement that's saying nothing, this won't happen or this will happen. Lou, as you, as you look potentially to make uh, some more trades possibly involving roster players, is there any, how do you weigh, I guess, that you might be weakening the Marlies in the process by having them to call up uh, some of the kids? Well, we certainly uh, are not trying to weaken uh, the Mollies. Uh, this has always been our thought process as far as timing. 
uh, to get the Maui's in here at a certain time. Wanted them to stay together for the majority of the season, uh, but I, I don't think it will weaken uh, their position uh, whatsoever. Uh, certainly, only time will tell. Uh, but you know, it's up to us to make sure that's monitored very closely because uh, we want them to have success. Lewis, Lewis uh, uh, Mark Masters with PSN. I'm just uh, curious how you've seen Leipzig's development this season so far. Well, I, you know, there's no question, uh, you know, with him given the opportunity, we see his development coming. I think he made the most of uh, a timing situation of what he was called up, uh, then came right back when he went to the minors and, you know, didn't miss a beat. Uh, but we could have called other players up uh, also and been very comfortable. Um, you know, when the right time is right, you'll see other people here. Lou, it's Mike Zeisberger from the Toronto Sun. Uh, when you were in Jersey, you really relied a lot on David Conti for uh, replenishing you with, with prospects and and how those draft picks uh, translated into players. Uh, can you just talk about, given the cachet of picks you're accruing, uh, what the importance of Mark Hunter is going to be moving forward in this process? Uh, good morning, first of all, Mike. But the, morning. I, I don't think I could uh, overestimate the uh, value and the knowledge and the expertise of Mark Hunter uh, and, you know, his position in this draft, uh, total, total comfortability. As you said, I was very fortunate to have David Conti for the number of years they were there. Uh, both have tremendous similarities as far as being at the rink each and every day and seeing games and having knowledge. And Mark certainly is of that. Uh, and the brief time that I have been here uh, and, you know, one of the first individuals that I spent time with because of how important he was. I'm impressed more and more with him and totally comfortable. Uh, and, you know, him having these picks in his hands, and I think that the Maple Leaf fans should feel comfortable also. I know our whole staff is, you know, throughout the Mollies, throughout the scouts, as far as their respect for him and coaching staff. Uh, he's, he's straightforward, no gray area, and, you know, knows what he's doing. Thanks, Lou. Lou, Lewis, Kevin McGrath of the Toronto Star. What's the Hi, logic of, of – how are you today? Um, what's the logic of uh, leaving Rafi Torres with the Sharks organization and, for that matter, uh, keeping Matt Bratton with the Marlins? Well, I, I think it's simplistic. I think that uh, we're, we're extremely comfortable with the people that we have in the Mollies. Uh, and I don't think that a veteran going into the Mollies right now is the right thing. Has nothing against Ralphie. I think that uh, – uh, the chemistry there is perfect. Uh, and once again, it's nothing to do with this individual. I do not know him personally. Uh, and I, I just felt that, that this was a transaction that, you know, was part of what we were trying to accomplish. And I don't think that there is a role for him uh, right now. He is certainly uh, not playing ready uh, for the NHL. Um, and, you know, in our opinion, my opinion uh, specifically, uh, that I – and it was part of the transaction that he would remain uh, in the minor league team in San Jose.